Hello. Welcome. This is our revision session. As you can see, we have a passionate paper of communication skills which was really, which was recently done august 2022 as you can see on your screen so let's have a look at it we revise together the questions with the possible answers and um we hope it will assist you so question one we have distinguished between Solicited proposal and unsolicited proposal. So that is our question one. So as you can see, it's four marks. So simply you're going to define what solicited proposal is and what unsolicited proposal is. Uh, solicited proposals, these are those proposals that they've been requested for. A person has basically requested for it. So you prepare it, take time, come up with information, come up with everything that this person is looking forward to get, and then basically uh, complete it and submit it. That is a solicited proposal. So the opposite of solicited proposal becomes a solicited proposal. This is that kind of a proposal that is not has not been requested for, but you yourself feel that this person might be interested in this kind of an idea. So if I come up with a proposal and submit it to him, he'll be in a position to... Uh, to be convinced or persuaded of the same so that is the difference between the two one is requested for and the other one is not uh, requested for so that is question one a and then question one b is asking for roles of a sender in the communication process and uh, in our notes we did the communication process we had a very good diagram that was illustrated that was illustrating the communication process from the first step up to the last step and uh, the roles of a sender in that communication process are as follows as you can see we have four roles the question is looking for four roles that a sender normally have in a communication process so the sender is always the source of communication and that is always a fact that will remain a sender is a person who initiates the communication. So if he, he or she is a person who initiates the communication, that means he is a source. So he is the source of the communication. That is the first role he plays. He also initiates it. Huh? So in the moment he initiates it, he also becomes there. So there's a connection between the, the two. He becomes a source. Why? Because he or she initiates it. So he's the source of information and he also initiates the communication process. In absence of the sender, then that means there is no communication. It's not unless the sender is there and he initiates the communication process, that's when everything flows. But when he's not there, no communication. So as much as he is the source of the, the information, he also initiates the communication process. The communication process will always start by a message from a sender. That is one thing that we need to know. He also encodes the message. What do we mean by encoding? Because in the process of communication, there's an encoding step. And encoding, we say this is where the, the sender uh, puts the message in the right order or in the right context, chooses the right words, and basically forms the communication, ready for him or for her to choose a channel and send that communication to the receiver. So encoding is like putting the message in the right order. And it's normally a role of the, a role of the sender. And then we have number four, which is the last role. He evaluates the availability of the media of communication and settles for the best alternative. Yes. The, 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 the sender, once he has the message, he has basically encoded it. It is in the right form. It is in the right format. The next thing is for him to see which media am I going to use to pass this message. Am I going to use a letter? Is it email? Is it telephone text or telephone call? So he's the one to decide which is the best media available in order for him to send the message. So these are the main roles that a sender will play in a communication process. And then the last part of our question, which is C, uh, it says circumstances which may necessitate a presenter to make use of visual aids. A visual aid is like a whiteboard, a blackboard, a projector those are visual aids these are some of the instruments that the sender or the presenter uses in order to enhance her the delivery of the communication 
So what are some of the circumstances that a presenter would would wish to use visual aids? Number one, when the seller would wish to enhance the level of understanding. We're not just speaking, standing and speaking in front of people could not make them understand better than when you use the visual aids. Sometimes even writing in a whiteboard, writing in a blackboard, using projectors to present could enhance the level of understanding for the, for the audience. So number one, when the sender is, 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 is really need to enhance the understanding level of the audience who would wish to go for visual aids. Number two, when the sender would wish to build the emotional bridge between him and his audience, or between him and her audience, sometimes you'll want to use visual aids because the visual aids would make the communication more live, more interesting, and then the, 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 the audience would also be more attentive. Because the issue of standing, presenting, or talking can become monotonous. The, the, the listener or the audience might listen and it will reach a stage or it will reach a point where he becomes tired of listening and uh, loses it all. So sometimes when you have these aids, visual aids, like a projector, like maybe writing on the board, sometimes having physical objects that you use them for giving examples, it can it can make that boredom go away. It can make this person basically connect with you because of the liveliness of the presentation. So that is also another reason. And then uh, when you want to uh, make the audience to easily remember whatever is being uh, whatever whatever is being presented, people say that seeing is believing. You hear, but when you see, you believe. So sometimes the, the presenter would wish to use the visual aids because they believe. Once the audience see, they'll be able to understand, believe, and grab whatever concept you're trying to, to present towards them. And then also, when you want to help the audience retain the information well, you also use visual, visual aids. Because by writing on the whiteboard or by writing on the blackboard or by using a projector to present, that means the communication of the, the presentation you are giving will sit and sink in the minds of the audience than just standing and speaking it out or standing and just talking. So sometimes you might, know, you might need to use visual aids if you want to help the audience retain, retain uh, information. And then lastly, when you want to have a fully attention of the, of, the, of the audience, sometimes you might need the, to use the visual aids. And uh, that is why I said speaking from the, first of the, from the first minute of the presentation up to the last minute of the presentation can seem boring sometimes. So it is always advisable at least to, you, you have a mixture of presentation mechanisms. Speak, the same time project, the same time write on the board, write on the whiteboard or the blackboard, that will also make that particular uh, that particular presentation more uh, more live or more more good in a way that the, the other part of the audience can be in a position to to become more attentive so that you can get fully the fully attention of them of the of, of the of the audience that is why i said sometimes speaking throughout becomes monotonous especially on the side of the listener listening from a to z or listening from first hour to the last hour becomes monotonous so you'll be necessitated or you'll be, uh, sometimes you'll be forced or emphasized to make use of the visual aids because at least you deal with that uh, monotonous that we are talking, that we are talking about. So those are some of the uh, circumstances which might necessitate a presenter make use of visual aids. So that is our first question. Uh, thank you and see you in our next, next question.